Welcome to Chapter 14, Pictorial Modernism. European poster design during the second decade of the 20th century was influenced by the modern art movements and the communication needs of both world wars. To begin our chapter, we're going to start with successful painters James and William Beggerstaff. They left a lasting impression during their brief graphic design careers. The brothers ignored the trend toward floral art nouveau, and they created a new working method for posters by cutting pieces of paper, moving them around, and pasting them into position. Later, this form of art became known as collage. I want you to be able to tell me what gestalt principles can you identify in these posters. Moving on from the beggar staffs, we're going to talk about Placasteel and Lucien Bernhard. Lucien Bernhard was a self-taught artist who established the approach to poster design using flat color shapes, the product name, and the product image. Here are two examples of his work. In his failing efforts to support himself, he found an advertisement for a poster contest for Priestern matches. He entered the contest and won on the convincing argument of a late juror who pulled one of his posters from the trash. He had successfully reduced communication to one image and one word. I want you to be able to tell me what are the graphic characteristics of the Placasteel style. In Bernhard's early poster career, he had developed a sans serif lettering style painted in broad brush strokes. This lettering impressed a staff member of the Flinish type foundry, and Lucien Bernhard also became a typographer. But he is best known for his repeated formula of taking an image, reducing it to simple shapes, such as his trademark Fohamel markometers done in 1912, and for this logo for Manoli cigarettes. How do you like that animation? And he repeated this product slash image formula over and over again. He created over 300 packages for 66 products in which he applied this very simplistic formula to. The lithography firm of Hollerbaum and Schmidt recognized the important direction that poster design was taking, and they signed exclusive contracts with Bernhard and several other artists. Hans Rudi Ert and Julius Kipkins were two of those artists. In 1905, Ert moved to Berlin, where he became a commercial poster artist. He was influenced by the work of Lucien Bernhard. He successfully applied Bernhard's formula to create this ad for Opel motor cars. And he created this ad for Never Fail Safes. Then there was Julius Gipkins, who was a self-taught artist who also applied Bernhard's formula to advertising design. His style was easy to recognize by the wiggly look of his letters and his imagery. The German, French, and Italian cultures influenced poster design in Switzerland. Emile Cardu created the first sock placket Swiss poster, which shared many of the same characteristics as the German Placasteel poster. Many outside influences are seen in the graphic design of Switzerland. Switzerland was, and still is, a very popular European vacation destination. This particular style was promoted by Nicholas Stoeckling, and in this poster beneath a pair of sunglasses, the tube of sunscreen lotion almost becomes a nose. I want you to be able to tell me what are the characteristics of sock plaquette style. The poster reached the zenith of its importance as a communications medium during World War I. Governments turned to the posters a way to spread propaganda and persuade. This was the first large-scale conflict fought with technology, and the funds and conservation drives had to be supported by the general public. Printing technologies were advancing quickly, but radio and other means of mass communication had not yet caught up. We're going to be looking at both the Allied 
and the Central Powers posters. In this Central Power poster for Germany's 8th Bond Drive, eight, pyro, eight arrows piercing a dragon remind citizen that their gifts have helped wound the enemy. And in this poster by Lucien Bernhard for a war loan campaign, a sharp militaristic feeling is amplified by the Gothic inscription, This is the way to peace. Thus subscribe to the war loan. Here are three examples of Central Powers posters. You'll notice the plaque of steel graphic style applied to each one of the posters in general. But I want you to be able to tell me what are the other general themes for the Central Powers posters. In contrast, I want you to take a look at the Allied posters and also let me know what were their general characteristics. And this first one here, which is a really famous one done by Alfred Leet, you have a picture of Lord Horatio Kitchener, who was the British Secretary of War, saying, I want you. In the center one, you have Uncle Sam saying, I want you, which was done by James Montgomery Flagg. Flagg actually based his depiction of Uncle Sam on Alfred Leet's depiction of Lord Horatio Kitchener. But the poster that was done by Flagg made it the most widely reproduced poster actually in history. And then lastly, we have a poster done by Seville Lumley saying, Daddy, what did you do in the Great War? where you have a direct appeal to sentimentality and, pastri and patriotism illustrated in this family scene. So again, what are the general themes of the Allied Powers posters? Strong emotions were visually displayed on both sides. So be able to compare and contrast the themes and styles of the Allied and Central Power War posters. So right now we're going to discuss a few of these poster style artists. The first one I want to talk about is Ludwig Holwein, who was known as the Maverick from Munich. He was born in Germany and trained as an architect and practiced until he started a new career in design with work commissioned by Jugend magazine. He quickly established himself as one of the most important people working in this field in Germany. Initially, his inspiration was the beggar staffs. His high tonal contrasts and a network of interlocking shapes make his work instantly recognizable. He was employed by the German government during the First World War to produce propaganda posters. Here is an example of some of his work. Almost illustrative in style with flat shapes and also patterning. These were the hallmarks of his design. Hovind's war posters closely mirrored Adolf Hitler's concepts for effective propaganda. Hitler had an uncanny knack for visual propaganda. In Mein Kampf, Hitler said that propaganda should be popular and should adapt its intellectual levels to the receptive ability of the least intellectual citizens. I want you to consider how did Holwein's posters reflect his opinion of how propaganda should be used in a society. Unfortunately, his name will forever be tainted because of his association with the Nazi party. The Spanish Civil War was the culmination of a prolonged period of national political unrest. Unrest in a country that was increasingly polarized and repeatedly unable to deal with the conditions of terrible poverty in which millions of its citizens lived. The hierarchy of the Catholic Church, identifying more with wealthy landowners than with the Spanish people, was in full control of secondary education, education for women they deemed almost unnecessary, and literacy that seemed more of a danger than a goal to the general population. So political propaganda played an important role throughout this war for both sides. Here are two examples where you can clearly see the plaque of steel or the Saxe placket style applied to poster design. After World War I, the world tried to return to normal. The Allied powers experienced a time of unprecedented prosperity and faith in the machine, and technology was high. This was expressed through art and design. 
Cubist ideals about spatial organization inspired an important new direction in pictorial images. Edward McKnight Coffer was an American artist living in London when the war broke out, and he incorporated Cubism directly into his work. A.M. Kassand played an important role in defining this new approach to the design that incorporated elements of Cubism and Art Deco. The term Art Deco was used to identify popular geometric works of the 20s and 30s. Art Deco signifies a major static sensibility in graphics, architecture, and product design during these decades between the two world wars. Many different influences like Cubism, the Bauhaus, the Vienna Secession, Egyptian, Aztec, and decorative geometric motifs combined to express the modern era of the machine. These designs are two-dimensional and composed of broad, simplified planes of color. In reducing the forms, he was very close to synthetic cubism. He was also a lover of topography and he had a special ability to integrate words and images into a total composition. Combining type, geometric forms, and symbolic imagery enabled him to produce masterpieces such as this poster for a Paris newspaper on the right-hand side. I want you to be able to tell me what is the symbolism behind this particular poster. Trains and ships were a large part of his poster subject matter, so many of his finest works were for railways and steamship lines. Pause the movie and examine these three pictures for reduction of form and symbolic imagery. One of his greatest pieces of work is this ad campaign for Dubonnet liqueur. The poster emphasizes the transition from looking to tasting to recognizing. His style of cinematic sequence of word and image was used to advertise the liqueur Dubonnet for over 20 years. I want you to be able to explain the graphic symbolism behind each progressive panel. This poster is an example of Kassan's approach to graphic design where, quote, the design should be based on the text and not inversely, end quote. Kassan also designed several typefaces. In this particular typeface before, the eye is able to fill in the missing parts. Kassan occupies an important position in the history of graphic design. As a pioneer of poster communication, typographic treatment, and the translation of complex visual subjects into symbolic forms. The visual themes he tackled became part of the program at the Bauhaus School. By showing the way to a new visual vocabulary more adapted to mass communication, he had a hand in widening the rift between fine arts and graphic design. Austin Cooper made a direct application of cubism to graphic design in England. In these two posters for the London Underground, Pure geometric shape and color are used to solve a communications problem. I want you to tell me how are cubist ideals applied to these designs for the London Underground. Joseph Binder was another pivotal designer. He reduced natural images to basic forms and shapes like the cube, sphere, and cone. This poster shows his use of cubism principles with a sense of naturalism applied to the figures. Germany, between world wars, became the hub of advanced ideas in all the arts as they flowed across her borders. Images inspired by cubism and French advertising art, along with other influences, combined to create a unique national style. Heinz Schulz Newton was a designer of this time and he created many memorable graphics during this time period. Excellent printing technology and rigorous art training enabled German graphic designers to achieve a high level of excellence. In this poster for the film Metropolis, you can see Art Deco influences, but in a more sinister way. It depicts a world where robots take over people, in contrast to real Art Deco ideals, which convey optimism for machines and human progress. You have to Google Metropolis and just check it out. So in conclusion, modernist pictorial graphics in Europe focused on the total integration of word and image. This became one of the most enduring currents of 20th century design. The momentum of the movement continued to provide graphic design solutions to communication problems during World War II and beyond.